Hello? Hello, is this on? How's it going, everyone? I'm just going to wait a minute for some people to find the link. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just wasn't talking. It took me a while to get this set up. Okay, so... Oh, there's an echo. Uh, let me see. Let me check the echo, sorry. Uh, I'm not hearing any loop back. Uh, do you potentially have it open on like Twitter and on uh, maybe like another tab? I mean, I had it playing. Let me let me see. I had it playing on YouTube, but I don't have desktop audio capture on, so I don't know. Let's see if that fixed it. But I didn't hear an echo when I was listening to it. So you might have it open in multiple places. Some background noise, no echo, yeah. Let me see if I can get the sound levels down. Yeah, <laughs> second tab. It's all good. All right, so this stream hopefully will be a little bit better than the last one in terms of uh, real-timeness. I switch, I pick the like ultra real time so i think there's like a four uh four or five second delay uh rather than the like minute delay that we had yesterday uh will there be a continuation of maple story reversing uh yeah i think at some point uh there will be maybe this weekend or something um i'd have to hop back in there and, and remember where i left off but that would be kind of fun to get back into i i still want to get that cheat working so All right, what is my full-time job? I work at uh, Microsoft doing security research. So I run a tools team there uh, where we would write tools for fuzzing and various other things. We do a lot of work with custom hypervisors and custom emulators and all sorts of things to, uh, to try and get determinism for fuzzing and just increase the quality of, of fuzz results. Uh, let's see. So for some reason, I can't read the last byte of these ranges. So I'm just gonna put E in them and hopefully that will give it to me. So I wrote a tool last night. Well, I improved this tool that allows me to read and write memory. And I uh, made it go through all of the different 4K pages in the address space to try and find different uh, memory regions. Before we only had three regions and this picked up a bunch more that I didn't know about. Um, did I fix the delay issues? Yes. Um, so the delay issues weren't really issues. It was a setting in YouTube. Um, it was just kind of the defaults, but they do have like a real time uh, one that I picked. So hopefully this will be a little bit better. But I'm just waiting for these uh, dumps to finish up. Hopefully it's not too much longer. Um, but basically I went through and I improved my tool to uh, mimic uh, what Android did when it opened up the uh, serial port for the Bluetooth. Um, so let's see, could not read that. Uh, let's see. I think for some of these ranges, we're just gonna cut them off if they're hurting us. We wanna do uh, 7FF and we'll just manually tweak these ranges until we're able to read all this memory. But I think these last few ranges are pretty small. So, except for that uh, 400 hex, which I'm guessing is probably a mapping of RAM or ROM, but uncached. Um, and they could use that for MMIO accesses or something. So, but we'll just get a dump of everything and then we'll uh, make a, we'll probably make a new Ghidra database and we'll see how hard it is to port things over to a new database. Um, if it's a pain, then we might have to go through and maybe Oh, what could we do there? Yeah, I'm sure there's a way that we can update the database or use the version control stuff. So once these uh, once these dumps wrap up, we'll start looking at that. But there are a couple things. So uh, Android has RF kill. I don't actually understand what it is, but I think it's uh, basically gives you control of like the power lines to um, chips on the board. Um, and I found that this RF kill 
was set to zero, meaning the Bluetooth chip was like not getting power, it was in a sleep state or something. So I actually uh, hard cycle it using RF kill here, and this was all I needed. This just fixed my issue. So sadly, that was kind of a hard thing to track down. Um, but once I got it figured out, everything just started working, and I made a note of that so I, I never forget that I had to do that. So this was the probe that I wrote. Um, hard kick is what RF kills it, so this should like hard kind of power cycle it. Um, then I open up the serial port, I reset the Bluetooth thing, so that sends the reset HCI command. And then I do go fast, which uh, configures the baud rate um, to 3 million bits per second instead of uh, 115K. Um, and I do this the correct way. I found a, a reference on like how this works. So you're supposed to write the command to set the baud rate. I then validate that I got the correct response saying it like worked. Um, and then after you've read this event, then you have to update the baud rate of your uh, file descriptor such that you're communicating at the right speed with this device. Um, other than that, I don't think anything else in this code base changed. Um, but now it works, and I have, in this case, I have the uh, Bluetooth, um, in this case, I've killed Bluetooth, and I have exclusive control over the serial port, and I shouldn't have to worry about Bluetooth hijacking it or me sending commands that then go to Bluetooth and cause Bluetooth to crash and then restart the chip. Um, so I've had no issues with uh, this working now. Um, I'm not quite sure why I'm not able to read the last byte of these regions. I don't think I have an off by one error. Um, so things should be correct here. Uh, hopefully, if, I mean, if we, I don't know, it's the same code I used before, so I think it should be fine. Uh, but what I could start doing is, I could start working on creating this new database. Um, actually, we might need to wait. So, but this is going through, I, Using this probe routine, it went through each 4K page in the address space um, to try to see if I could read a byte from the first byte of the page. And if I was able to read the byte, then I logged this and I'm, I wrote this to a log file. And then at the end, I just had this log file of all the pages I was able to probe. And um, I just condensed those down into ranges and that's where I got these uh, ranges. So these ranges directly came out of a Python script that parsed these probe outputs and condense them down into a set of ranges. Um, so it looks like this is, uh, it looks like this is getting real slow here. There we go. Uh, could not read. I'm going to run it again and see if it comes through, but it doesn't look like it. So that range, um, so it looks like these ranges might be a little bit more dynamic. Three, six, uh, three, five. F, 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 F. So we're just trimming these ranges down to uh, to size until we're able to read them. So we're technically probably missing a little bit here and there, but I I don't think these regions are going to be too important. Um, let's see. How's this stream quality for everyone? Is it coming through nice and good? I'm not really able to preview it. This computer just can't handle the... Uh, this is... Uh, this box just doesn't really have a GPU in it. Well, it does, but it's an old GPU. So it's kind of struggling with uh, OBS and coding and stuff. Quality's good and delay seems good. Perfect. So these will be probably the settings I'll use in the future. And maybe I'll uh, grab a graphics card out of a bin so I can maybe get a little bit better in coding. Okay, and we're on to this last region, I think. This uh, 400,000. So this one is big. I have no idea what's in it and why it's so big, but I'm guessing it's probably just a repeat of early memory with uh, different uh, permissions or something, or not permissions, different uh, um, caching behaviors. So anyways, this is just kind of running through. Uh, we can kind of introduce where we were last night. So if you missed the stream last night, there is a stream recording that YouTube automatically saved if you want to check that out. Um, but what we've done is we, in Ghidra, we were able to identify the location of uh, something that looked like it was uh, finding the dispatch routines for the different HCI command IDs, command types that you can send it. Uh, so let's see, dispatch. I think I called it dispatch. 
um, look up command dispatch. So this function here, so the issue that we ended up running into last night, we found that this is masking it off and it's looking up the different parts of the Bluetooth command uh, in these tables. So this table has the like, um, this 28B1AO. This one seems to have the maximum command ID that's allowed for that, um, for that table. And then this one seems to have the uh, actual function pointers that it looks up, because when this returns out, uh, it's going to call the function pointer that this returns. Uh, you write all your code in Rust. Is it actually viable enough to replace C? I have zero issues uh, with doing everything in Rust. I've done OSs in it. I've done things for MIPS. I've done things for ARM. I've done things for Android. Uh, I've never really done it for OS X or iOS because I don't do really any OS X stuff. Um, but all of my tools, like my new uh, fuzzing tools that I'm working on, are all written in Rust. Um, in fact, pretty much everything I've done in the past few years has been written in Rust. Um, and I have no complaints. I, I think I'm a faster dev in Rust, and I'm definitely a better dev when I'm using Rust. Um, so if we look at, maybe we can pull up, while this is uh, dumping, because that will probably take another like three or four minutes, uh, we can pull up reference for uh, maybe the Bluetooth spec. And I don't know why, I'm not sure why the uh, display is so laggy today. It shouldn't really matter for you guys, but I'm just trying to close out some windows and I'm gonna see if that helps at all. Uh, we can close this, okay. Yeah, Rust went stable a while ago, uh, like t two or three years ago. Apparently it was pretty hard to use before then because it was changing a lot. Um, I actually do a lot of work with nightly Rust uh, since I do a lot of OS dev or things that are uh, no standard. Um, let's see, is this one gonna work? Otherwise I think I have the blue two spec somewhere. This is not what I want. Um, see, uh, Bluetooth HCI spec. Because I know the Bluetooth spec is gigantic. I would really like to have just the HDI portions of it. Um, I have no idea what this is. This might be just the HCI components. So if we kind of look at how these HCI commands work, and sorry for this like crazy, crappy PDF, but um, it should do. So we can look at what these uh, HCI packets look like. Uh, so these OGFs, yeah, so this is what I'm, these commands, it, it's what we're masking off here. This command ID is what's coming in. So the commands are a two byte opcode to uh, uniquely identify different types of commands. It's divided into two fields, the OGF, the opcode group field, and the OCF, the opcode gr uh, command field. Um, so the OGF is the top six bits, which is this FCOO. So that's getting the top six bits from the command. So this is getting the OGF. So if we make a comment here, uh, mask off, so we only have the OGF group. Um, and then once that's done, it picks seven instead. So I think this is just capping the group to seven. Um, and then down here, it uh, masks with O3FF, which is the remaining part of the command ID um, oops, that was not where I wanted to put that comment. Uh, let's put it here. There we go. Um, this is getting the remaining part, which should be the OCF. Uh, so yeah, the OGF 3F is reserved for vendor specific debug commands, which is the FCOO. So this is basically saying, um, is the command opcode a vendor specific command. Um, and then we just look up in these tables. So we're waiting for these dumps to finish up because in last night we kind of had to cut off, well, we had to cut off because I had to go to bed, but we were unable to see what was in these uh, function pointer tables because we didn't have this memory. But now we should have it. Let me see if this range is in our list of things. We need a 28B 
and we have the 2.8 range to 2.9. So we will now have this range in our database once we uh, finish these dumps and uh, start loading up the new one. So, no, oh, why is that? Uh, okay. Sorry, I'm just organizing things a bit here. Um, ta there we go. So that's at 30%, which is pretty close to being done. So, yeah, it depends what you're doing. Async support is not there. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really written any async things. Uh, GUI pro programming isn't there. Uh, I don't really do any GUI programming. Web is still not there. They have actually pretty good um, bindings for WebAssembly. Uh, I've built a couple applications. I used uh, some Rust WebAssembly to uh, do some uh, graphing that I had to do. And I just wanted to pick that because I do a lot of work on both Linux and Windows and I didn't want to tie myself down into a platform specific thing. So why not just uh, use the browser? So anyways, we have these different fields. This is what the um, packets look like, an HCI packet. So on the wire, we'll kind of be able to deconstruct what that looks like. So in this case, when we're sending this command here, the one I think means that it's an HCI command. Then here's the opcode, the FCOA, parameter length uh, five, and then the parameter, the parameters just go in order. So, and this kind of highlights some of the different opcodes and fields and things that you can have. So where did that, why did I keep, okay. So 36% on that, which is pretty close. So what I want to do is I'm gonna start loading up this, um, these dumps into a new database. So let's do adb pull data local temp, which is where I'm storing these things. And we'll just start filling in the ranges that we already have. So we're going to temp uh, arm dump four, because that's the one that's currently in progress. Um, and then all these other ones look pretty good. So let's go back into the Ghidra like main thing and we're gonna do, um, we're gonna add, so we're gonna rename this one if we can. I'm guessing we can. This is, oh, can't rename it because it's open. Uh, so we'll close that and then we'll rename this to, um, uh, let's say old partial firmware dot bin and then we'll make a new one and we'll grab the Bluetooth reversing in this case we had this is in Bluetooth dumper and then in temp so we just need to load these all at their uh, correct locations so this one's loaded at zero um, all of these are going to be arm v7 little Indian so this one right here um, so I'm just gonna copy this string if I can, or oh, maybe I can't. And then we'll make sure that's loaded at zero, looks good. And then we'll open this up. And we don't wanna analyze this one yet because we want to load up the other regions first and set up the permissions. So we don't wanna analyze, but this looks good. And then we'll start adding, this one is specifically uh, ROM we know oops what's going on rom i think that worked i think this uh i put it into this qt mode yesterday and it just doesn't seem to be as good as the swing one i'm gonna go back to kind of the default let's see tool options tool uh i'm just gonna do uh, restore defaults Sort of faults. Okay. So we just have to restart Ghidra here. That's fine. So we'll just quit out of here. Oh. Uh, I have a pop up there. Yeah, I'm having like all kinds of rendering issues when I'm doing this uh, this display. So I think that's PS. Let me see. A. Okay, looks good. And we'll just open up uh, Ghidra quickly. And I just need to grab the guest, this one. 
So oops, this command. All right, so hopefully this will be a little bit better. All right, yeah, this is what I was used to. Okay, old partial firmware, load this up. And let's see, am I good on RAM? Okay. So we have, oh, did that start analyzing? Oh, that's the old one, my bad. We want this one. And it'll start loading up these regions now. So we there's a uh, an add to program here, which is what we're going to be using this Alt I, um, which might actually be a hotkey in my window manager. So I might have to, uh, yeah, I think it is. So we'll load this one up E and then four zeros. So options E one two three four. And I think this is this scratch space, so we'll rename this scratch. Uh, rename scratch. And now we just have to kind of load up all the regions. I don't know of a good way to do this in bulk. Um, and this is fine, this is only a couple things. So this is at 100,000. And we're gonna name this, uh, I think, unknown. We don't know what is actually in this region here. Add to program, uh, 280,000. In there. Three hundred thousand. This is kind of like right on the cusp of like, it's not really worth automating because it's only a couple of these files, but it's getting close to where this would be annoying to do more. Three ten thousand. Uh, three twenty four thousand. Oh, is this mm, is this adding them all to the RAM block? Let's see if there's a gap there at three hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. And then import here, 370,000 is the last one. And we have one more that's in progress. So that one's at 370, loaded. Uh, that looks good. And a lot of these are probably gonna be zeros. So I, yeah, I don't know what this region is, but it's all kind of zeroed out. Um, actually, there's a chance that a lot of the RAM is zeroed out or not initialized because I think I reset the device, so it's possible that the RAM is, no, the chip has to be booted up and running. How much memory does Gidry use for smaller binaries? I'm not sure. Since this is Java, um, it'll kind of dynamically use more memory if you have more memory, and this machine has 48 gigs of RAM, uh, so it, Java's doing a pretty good job of using memory, but it looks like it's using, uh, looks like it's using a little bit less than a gig. So, or a little bit more than a gig, just slightly over a gig, which is not bad at all. I, I would say that's completely fine. So save this database and then what's this flag here? There are multiple regions in here. Modularized by this, that's kind of cool. Isolate entry overlap code, go to in view. Oh, 64 bit defaults to a max of one gig. Interesting. Huh. Well, this has been a really usable tool for limited to one gig of RAM. Yeah, 48 gigs of RAM on this box. So, Ghidra's not using 48 gigs of RAM. That's how much RAM this machine has. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I wonder if there's a way to split this up. Modularized by partitioned code. 
Um, how much time have I been online? This stream has been up for, uh, geez, like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So not too long yet. We're just getting into the, the meat of her. So if I... I kind of don't want all of these different regions to be in this RAM group, but maybe I have another option in uh, memory map here. So yeah, I'll, so this one, how do I rename that? So we know that this is ROM, so it's not writable, but everything else, I think we're fine. So we will save that. Uh, close this window. And this is almost done 80% until this. Might be select addresses. Oh, that selects the regions, I guess, included in that area. Wait. Wait a minute, did I do this wrong? Add to program. Uh, oh, I see. I see the flag indicates, so you can select a specific region and then it limits to just that region. So, interesting. That's kind of cool. So yeah, that's something. If you click on one of these and you have the flag by it, you might end up uh, not being able to see the whole binary. <laughs> but that makes sense. That's actually kind of convenient to be able to filter down like that. And we're at 84% on this, so almost ready. And then we'll load in that last region, and then somehow we'll see if we can copy over symbols from the last one. Uh, and I don't, I don't know how what that process is gonna, is gonna look like, but hopefully it's pretty seamless. Um, but we definitely want to use this new database because these dumps are much, much, much more complete. So. Uh, yeah, so I could have just added the regions here as separate regions. Um, what about auto rename? No. But if I hover over it, I can see that there are multiple regions in this. Um, maybe in the memory map, I can do uh, here. I have no way to rename. Oh, maybe I can just click on here. My bad. Uh, if we look at ROM, scratch, unknown. I think this one is RAM. This one is unknown two, unknown three, unknown four, unknown five. So, and I'm just going to say all those are RWX except for ROM, which is not writable. But we'll see if that takes effect. Mm, no. So these things are separate. Um, so maybe we can auto-rename now? Mm. Uh, sort by address, modularized by complexity, merge with parent, select addresses. Hmm. There's a create fragment. Yeah, you can do it on the root one, create fragment. Okay, so that's like a new region entirely. So, I don't know. I don't really care that they're not separate regions because I, I don't know what they're called, so it doesn't really matter if I know what they are. But they're all loaded correctly, so everything's fine. They're at the right addresses, so I'm not too worried about it. 95%. Almost complete. But yeah, can figure it out later. So once this is done, we just have to grab this last file off. Um, uh, what is this? How do I fix this split? I want to split vertical. I don't know how I switch that. Uh, current and previous layout, tiled layout, yeah. What is the way? Tiled and floating tabs. 
I did Alt I and I tried that and I didn't see. I didn't see anything for that. Unless I misclicked, I maybe missed the button. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one failed. That's fine. It just couldn't read at, uh, couldn't read at this address. Oh, is there another memory region? Um, what is the main.rs? Uh, oh, I see. Couldn't read at 7FF. So 607FF seems to be the end of this region. So, and this should just be done. Uh, couldn't read at 7FF. We got to go back, I guess. Uh, wait, what? 7FF, 7FE. This one I think will be fine. Okay. So we have those regions, um, adb pull data local temp dump 04. All right, and temp temp to bcm 4 through 30 image, and then hopefully that doesn't screw anything up. I think this probably makes copies of all these. I can't imagine it does uh, um, that it can't work with these copies. So this is now at 400,000 and this is the last region we have to load. Uh, unknown and uh, unknown, let's say six. So now we have everything loaded up. We have to change the processor mode and set the t-bit to one. And that we should now be ready to analyze. So we're just going to Get this going. Analyze. And this is a lot bigger now than the last database. And once this is done analyzing, oh man, now we get to watch it analyze. I love this part. <laughs> so we're just watching kind of this bar here fill in with blue, which will be code. Um, so let's see, there's definitely a lot more going on now, but what is everyone up to today? Is, uh, is this early in people's days, late in people's days, people at work right now? Two AM. Ooh, that is late. Um, okay. So let's see, did this uh, hmm. Did I pick the wrong architecture potentially here? I don't think so. Um let's see. I don't know why it didn't pick up so much. In the other one, it picked up everything. Why is it missing so much? Hmm. That's kind of strange. Unless the first region is so small, but no, there's... I wonder if it's getting thrown off by those other regions. That's kind of strange. Weird. Huh. Unless I... I don't think I picked the wrong architecture. Right? Um, processor options. T mode. What's a good way to see what the processor is on this? Actually, the main... Menu, yep, arm little 32. Huh. That is really strange. I don't know why I uh, struggled to analyze this when it's exactly the same. 
is the other one, unless it's just not loaded up in the same way. Yeah, I did have problems with thumb encoded instructions, but I, I set this explicitly into T mode. So what we could do is we could uh, close this and just load up the old database, the old one. And we'll just load up the one region we actually care about here. Uh, so in this case, we were in the function is dispatch. So look up commands here, and we just want to load up this, the region that would have 28B1A. So we'll load that one as a separate thing. So this is 28. This 28 region, we'll add this one, and we'll put this at uh, 280,000 here. And let's see if that loads up. Um, okay, so hopefully that will now fix up some of these. We might have to reanalyze, or we might have to explicitly tell tell this that those are now addresses. But we'll uh, we'll see what happens. We should start a Gitter support group for sleep deprivation. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely spent a, a little bit of time in Geech in the past two days. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. I need to grab some water. All right. So it looks like it's picking that up as data. So it is filling in that new segment correctly, which is good. And we shall see. I wonder if it's finding code in there. I'm not sure. But I think it's cleaning up all of these things with new references. So that looks like that completed. Save. And now we have this table. And we also have this. Um, if we go to this address, this is, so this is indexing at this table location. Let's say this is an array of how many elements. Command ID and that is, what is the maximum value for this? So if var1 is greater than 7, so 0 to 7 is the allowed range here, I think. So this should be... Um, is that eight entries? Because that one's seven, it's indexing the seventh byte, so this should be eight entries in size. And I think it is dereffing it as bytes, so we're gonna say this is a byte, and we're gonna say this is a an array of eight bytes. Um, and then we can hit plus there, and this will tell us the number of commands allowed for each thing. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, hmm, that's, that's kind of not what I expected. That this one is 0 for the vendor specific commands. Um, uh, huh. And I'm guessing these are in order. So when it's FCOO, then this is set to seven, which then means it goes, uh, if that is not equal to zero, so this is the, this is the, oh, this is directly after. So we got the length of that table correct. And then this is the dispatch table. Um, is it, does it double deref that? Right, this this is how many elements in size. This indexes var one times four, and var one is up to uh, and command ID is less than that. Huh? Why is that zero? If the command ID is less than zero. We might have another dispatch spot potentially. I'm not sure, um, but we'll go. We'll go into this one. This one is the 
Um, so this is the uh, Max o, uh, OCF for groups. And then this one is the, we're dereffing that as an integer with var1, which is, this is the uh, OGF. So we're taking the OGF and we're looking that up in this table and we're gonna deref that and if it's not equal to zero and the command ID and this is less than this, then we return this. Otherwise, E90D. Um, in that case, it returns just kind of an empty pointer, I guess, or an empty function. So if we go to this one, this is an int, or technically this is a pointer, and then this should be a, uh, oh, is that a pointer? Unless this is code, it gets this, and then it derefs OGF. Uh, well, let's make this into an eight byte or, or an eight entry array. Uh, create array, open bracket. Let's see if we can remember that hotkey. So I don't know if these are actually pointers. Um. So if this pointer array OGF is not equal to zero and the command ID is less than this, which is weird because for OGF zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I would expect this to be zero. Then we go into here, we take, we get this and we add these look kind of broken. I'm, I'm kind of confused. 288E. I don't know what. Hmm. So it is looking that up. So it's getting one of these fields and then it's adding the command ID times four to that. So it's treating that as a pointer, but I don't, these don't look like pointers to me. These look like, there's like a pattern here. To it A, B. Are we unaligned by a slight bit? Unless this uh, decompilation is wrong, but I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen any decompilation issues. But this is kind of strange. We're grabbing this. We grab the, let's say we grab the seventh element, which is this. And that's like some random thing. Um, it's possible that this memory maybe isn't initialized in the image that I took, or the snapshot that I took. Um, kind of doubt, doubting that. Uh, huh. Three, five, three, five, six E. Like these seem sane. Then let's, uh, let's take a look at the XRFs to this. Uh, reference to this and okay so over here this shifts it by uh, I don't know this uh, syntax here oh is that a shift amount into wait so we have this we load this which is this address oh you know what maybe I'm wondering if this pointer changes. This might be like heap allocated things and it's possible that I can't have, I might not be able to use 
a dump from this region from a different snapshot. This might just be some generic memory or something. And we're just seeing like random heap data here that's unrelated. Because these honestly almost look like code. Let me see, clear these. Clear these. Find MS instructions. No, that's definitely not code. Um, that's the only thing I could think is that Let's uh let's read the assembly there. Show references to this. Uh, we have a couple. We have this one that references it, and we have this that references it. So, what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm gonna look in my uh, in the new database, and I'm gonna see if this address changes. Because if this address changes, then that might be a sign that um, this is at eight f seven f eight. It's possible that this is just a heat pointer and we might have to do a dump that is kind of more consistent by dumping without resetting the device. So, and that's fine. That's something I maybe anticipated here. So this is a pointer. And in this case, this points to this, which looks like garbage. I think, um, and then if we go up to the uh, non-RAM version of that, if we go to F7, F8, this one has a reference to 28B1A8. Okay. So I'm thinking that maybe the patch isn't in the... I didn't run the patch in this uh, dump. So what I think I'm going to want to do is... I think I want to create a dump of ram and ram and scratch and we want to not reset the device and i think i want bluetooth to use it first so let me grab my monitor hook everything up uh, let's see um, okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to change our code slightly. The dumping code, oh, man, I need to, let's see, Divium horizontal uh, split. Uh, how do I get rid of it? What is it? Uh, mod I, mod D. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's kind of weird that I'm... Oh, it's, uh, it's like hailing out right now. What? That's coming down pretty hard. That is, uh, that is bizarre. What the hell? It's like, uh... Huh. It's like a little pellet size, like, uh, I would say it's like airsoft pellet sized hail. Anyways. So, oh, this apparently got fixed when I looked away for two seconds. Okay, so let's look at, uh, let's look at the code and main.rs. And the regions we care about, we have ROM here. This is scratch and this is RAM. And then these, uh, this has dispatch tables uh, in here. And then ADB shell C data local temp. Okay, so this will go through and it would dump these different regions. But what I want to do is um, ADB shell and I want to Bluetooth with ADB. So, geez, my computer's so. Uh, laggy and jumpy right now. 
So I'm gonna do service call, Bluetooth manager, uh, actually PS grab blue. Okay, Bluetooth is not running. PS grab blue. Uh, I think maybe six is start it. Okay, uh, log cat. And unable to start in 10. I think that's fine. Uh, uh, okay, D. And then I want, uh, I think it's, there we go. So this, I think eight stops Bluetooth. So if you look at Logcat, we should see clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up, exiting, whatever. And then six will start it. And this is nice because this is going to load everything up. It's going to cause the um, patches to get applied to the firmware, which we want. It's going to set it up for normal use. Um, and then we should hopefully be able to do an eight. And hopefully that just detaches. I can't imagine that resets the Bluetooth chip. Shutdown of module, uh, vendor callbacks. Billy on, shutting down, blah, blah, blah. So I think that should have closed the handle. Oops, we just got scrolled. Uh, this one, yeah. Uh, device FD, so it closed the serial device, which is nice. Um, but I don't think it actually resets it. So what I want to do now is I want to change my stuff. And I don't want to hard kick. I don't want to reset. I don't even want, oh, I might want to go fast. So hopefully this will work and this will let us get a dump in one go of ROM, Scratch, and RAM, and this dispatch table thing from a state that probably had patches applied. Uh, okay, so that failed. So I'm guessing, let me see. So this will reset it, that works. It might not be in the right baud rate. So I might need to configure the baud rate because it might be left in uh, 300 million. So if we go here, so this is working. Okay, so let's, uh, let's kick it. So we'll echo this. So this will RF kill it, um, oops. So that will kill it. Um, and then we want to start that Bluetooth process again. That was, what command was that? Service call, I think it was eight or something is what started it. Eight is what killed it. So we'll kill it and then we'll do six to start it. You eat log cat. Looks good. Looks like Bluetooth is up. And then we'll stop Bluetooth by sending an eight. Logcat again. I did the cleanup and now we want this to work and maybe instead this time we'll do a 300 uh, or three million. Okay, so that is failing. Hmm. What is the hardware setup? Uh, yeah, it's just Android on a CI20. Um, it's Android, I can't remember which version of Android it is. Okay, so that failed. We'll start the Bluetooth, we'll kill it. So when we did 115.200, we had a different error, and let's see what that is. Okay, so that's behaving the same. Maybe we'll do go fast. Uh, and reset. I don't think reset actually will get rid of the... Um, I don't think that will kill the thing. Let's see. Six, eight, and make. Assertion failed. Okay. 
The hard kick, like, resets it to, like, complete default state, which is nice, but I, we need to apply that firmware, I think. So, hmm. <laughs> How are we going to do that? Six, eight, reset, go fast, dump, and then that's failing um, at 105. That's failing here on read event. If header, uh, actually, we'll just do this. Maybe we're getting a, a partial thing, so eight will kill it. Um, I might need to do this in a loop where I... Uh, is the stream still going? My YouTube's like not loading. I just want to double check. I think that yeah, it's still going. I don't know. My YouTube mis misbehaved. Um, okay, so I think what we want to do is we might need to handle partial reads. Maybe let's do a print on this. Print bread bytes bread. And if we do this, we'll kind of see what we're getting. Red zero bytes. And I wonder if I can, I'm just going to put this in a loop quick. Um, header not found in the scope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so that read never completes. Uh, six to start Bluetooth, eight to stop Bluetooth. Oh, you know what? I think it might RF kill it when it's when I stop Bluetooth. So what happens if we do this while Bluetooth is running? We get red zero bytes. Okay. So what we might be able to do is apply the um, we might be able to apply the firmware ourselves. So if we look at we open Wireshark. Uh, I have a log of kind of what this BT Snoop HCI log. This tells me how this is all the logs on the device. So we can see it sends a reset, which is the first thing we do. It sends an update baud rate to set the baud rate to 3 million, which is what we do. Um, and then it sends read local name. This returns back. Uh, okay, so this returns back the version of it and then it sends this download mini driver command uh firmware blah blah so download com command complete so what we might be able to do is just kind of replay some of this stuff hey how's it going so then write firmware write firmware write firmware write firmware launch ram Command complete. Uh, so yeah, this is running the launch ram command. Here we go. And then it sends a reset, and then the reset complete. And so yeah, I don't know what the reset is. I don't think it's actually resetting the device. Sets the host and buffer sizes there. Sets pairing modes. Sets this stuff. Sets some scan enable. I'm thinking we maybe just replay this. Um, so if I kill this log, so this log is stored. I forget where this log is. Uh, let's kill this. AD shell. Uh, cat sys yeah. system at Bluetooth. BT stack, I think. Oops. Uh, this one. So here's where the Snoop log is. Snoop. So this should not be present. Yup. And then I will start Bluetooth. It's currently not running. And I'll start Bluetooth. And so we have Bluetooth up and running, and now that file should exist. Um, 
And I think we'll just, uh, we'll steal this Snoop Log. We'll just give it a second to like warm up and do everything. And then we'll just replay exactly the commands that it sent to the Bluetooth port. And hopefully that will program it up in the exact same way that it's programmed up in Android. Um, and that will kind of be nice because I think we're just, we're taking a snapshot in a different state than what it actually runs in. So we just have to kind of get it up to where it's supposed to be running. So ADB pull, uh, let's see, do I have BT snoop? I do not, cool. ADB pull this. And ls-l, so that looks good. And I'm just gonna pull it again. I just wanna see if this file size is increasing. And it doesn't look like it. So it looks like the Bluetooth chip is like in a pretty stable state where it's just fixed. Um, and this is the state that, okay. So this looks good. We're gonna open this in Wireshark. Uh, here we go. So now I want to open, in this case, I care about uh, Bluetooth, blue, why is this sorted in reverse? Bluetooth reversing, Bluetooth thumper, BT snoop, uh, this is the log. I think this is gonna be the same as what we saw before, but I just wanted to double check and that looks good. So send write extended. That's sending some stuff. Write scan enable. Receive command. So hopefully I will be able to just replay this traffic. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Bluetooth dot dest stir. Uh, okay, so things, so that's to the controller. Okay, so I can filter on that. And I just want a list of all of these. Oh crap, that wasn't what I wanted. And I'm probably just going to replay these and then I'm going to assert that it comes back in the way we expect, but this should, this will set it up exactly as Android sets it up. So this should hopefully have the, um, the RAM patched and everything, and, and maybe this will change the shape. So how do we get, what is a good way? Do I parse this log myself? Let's see what this looks like. BT snoop. Snoop. Um, I'm guessing this is gonna be a pretty simple format. Maybe I can just search for it. Uh, Let's just Google, uh, uh, what is this, BT snoop hci.log format. Uh, what is that? BT snoop file format. So storing, okay, so this is an RFC. Or, well, it resembles this thing. So we have a pack, uh, file header and then packet record number so the file header is an identification pattern. Let's see if that checks out. Uh, this is 6274, yeah. Um, and then 70.70, so that's the header. Oh, that's just BT Snoop. And then right after that, there's a version number. This document describes version number one, which is this. Yup, and then we have a data link type which is, in this case, it's saying, oh, uh, wait. We have the version number, which is this, which is version one. Then we have this, which is like some unassigned where it's snooped from. I don't think we care about that. And then it starts with records. So original length, this is saying four bytes. The included length is four bytes some packet flags, some cumulative drops, and then timestamp in microseconds. And then this is probably the packet data. Uh, no, this is probably the timestamp is probably eight bytes. 
timestamp 64 bits, and the packet data is, there it is, it's this uh, one, three, C, yeah. And then we start with a new packet, which is seven bytes, and that will be the uh, controller packet, which is seven, is it seven? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we should be able to parse this format pretty, pretty easily. Um, let's bring in, um, okay, we are going to make a, a new struct, make a struct, struct, uh, bt snoop parser. And this will have a file, which will keep track of that. Or actually, we'll just have bytes. Ah, we'll do, uh, ah, we'll do bytes. So this is the raw contents of the BT Snoop. Impl BT Snoop parser function new, and then this will be. Um, this will be this. Can we take a file name? Yeah, I guess we can. Oh, we're gonna have to. Oh, that's gross. Whatever. Um, file name stir, and then we have to do since we don't have uh, standard Rust, we have to. Um, why am I not using standard Rust? Let me quickly. Uh, start term. Let me see if I can make a a project that uses lib standard on uh, Android here. I'm not sure if this will work or not. So why can't I close this terminal? Okay, it went away. I think yeah. So we'll do cargo new bin. We'll call this um, MIPS Android. CP MIPS Android cargo uh, CP uh, Bluetooth reversing Bluetooth thumper make file to here. We'll take the dot cargo to here and okay. So could not find LGCC under S. Uh, okay, so, sorry, I know it's not really readable here, um, so we want to go into Bluetooth reversing, Android, NDK, uh, platforms, Android 24 is what we're using, uh, vim dot cargo. Cargo config, we are using Android 24. So, arc mips. So, we made some of these fake files, like uh, libpthread, and we're going to call this uh, libgccs.a. And we're just get, we're going to see if we can coerce this. Hmm. So there are a couple of references that it's looking for. Error no location, TLS get adder. Ooh, without TLS get adder, it's just not gonna work at all. Um, and let's see, I don't think there is a MIPS Android target. Yeah. There's a Musil one. We could maybe do a Musil toolchain. Uh, Let's see if this works. Uh, oh, when did when is there a CUDA? There's a CUDA thing? That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so then make file and then GNU, this becomes now Musil. Uh, relocations in yeah, this. So, send us GNU Musil. Uh, 
Alright, well this is not gonna work. Cool. I probably could get that to work with a, a little bit of time and effort, but uh, we're not gonna bother. We're just gonna go into what we were working on, which is this BT Snoop. We're gonna unsafe libc open file name dot as pointer as uh, const this libc o read only. So, and this will give me an FD. Assert F D is not equal to negative one. And then we'll do libc read from F D into a buffer. Let mute buff equals vec with capacity to a meg. Buff dot as mute pointer as mute this. Buff dot capacity. And then bread. And then we'll just uh, assert spread is greater than zero. Let's see, close FD. And then we can do buff.setlen to bread. And BT snoop parser, BT snoop buff. So we'll do BT snoop parser. Um, new and data misc Bluetooth logs. Uh, actually, we'll do data local temp bt snoop ati.log and we have to null terminate it and return zero. And this should fail because um, that file doesn't exist and this is failing because this needs to return a self. Three sixty four set bread uh, expected use size. That should be good. So at three fifty six, this assertion failed because it failed to find that file. So we'll do a uh, uh, adb push bt snoop data local temp. And now that file should exist. Good. So now we can do fm parse mute self and we will then do uh, let's mute pointer is equal to self dot bt snoop and then we want to we want to get the eight so it should start I think we're just gonna hard code the start of this so assert Pointer dot dot eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen sixteen. So it's just a sixteen byte header. Is equal to b x sixty x seven four seven three six e six f six f seventy o o. And then this is version one. And then this field, we don't know what this is. This is a uh, hex dump. What's the hex? Actually, xxd um, little Indian. I want the, I just forget what it is. I just want the single digits. Um, what is it? Uh, number of octets in normal output g1 okay head and okay so that should be then oh maybe it's big endian yeah it looks like it's big endian okay that's good to know this and then we should have X, uh, so that's after that, and then O O O O O three E A. So uh, no implementation. Yup. 
So I'm just going to make sure that the header's the same. It's really strict to do that, but whatever. And then we'll do pointer is equal to pointer 16, which basically consumes that. So then what I can do is I can make a macro here. And we'll call this consume. This is going to take a type, uh, which is a ty. Um, I think we can do this. We'll do this. And we'll do uh, let mute bytes is equal to OU8 size of type. And then we'll do uh, bytes dot copy from slice pointer dot dot uh, bytes dot len. Uh, I'm not going to be able to borrow that there. And then I can do, uh, I think this type from be bytes of bytes. And then let ret is equal to this. That's the return of this macro. And then we do pointer is equal to pointer dot dot byte stop. Uh, oops. And I should be able to now do uh, consume u32. So let's just print this out and see if this looks like a length. Uh, yeah, there's no standard. Okay, and what happened there? Oh, I didn't call parse. Uh, mute snoop is equal to this snoop dot parse. All right, so assertion failed. Oh, this did fail. I made a typo here, didn't I? Six two seven four seven e six e seven six e six f six f seventy o o o o o o o o o one. What? Okay. What did I do wrong here? Uh, I feel like that's wrong. Seventy three seven ah seven e. Yup. All right. So then that got a four. Good. So this is uh, loop. Let orig len is equal to this. Let the uh, included length is equal to that. Flags. Let uh, drops. Let timestamp. And then we have the raw packet data. So assert orig len is equal to inkle len. Uh, assert drops is equal to zero. So we want to make sure that all of the bytes are included. And then here we'll do pointer is equal to pointer uh, inkle len. And here we'll cast these. Okay, so then we consume that, and this will uh, this should end with an assertion. Yep. So while uh, pointer dot len is greater than zero. All right, and then this we should be able to print packet of bytes. This is urgent. Yeah. And then if we look through, we should see that this ends in a similar thing. We have, uh, let's see, we have a 5757245725725. So that looks good.
a search look so hacky? Ah, it's fine. It is hacky. We're hacking. You you can't you can't hack without hacks. <laughs> um so now I need to see, so the timestamp we don't care about, drops we know zero, and then flags. I'm guessing if we look at this, let's see if we can find the flags. I don't know. I'm going to hope that flags are direction and pretty clean. So let's see. We'll output flags as hex, and I'm guessing... Okay, we have three and two and three and two. Um, I'm gonna guess that two. Uh, actually, we have a spec. I don't know. Flags, direction flag, sent and then received, and command flag is command and data. Okay, so let's two control, uh, two controller is equal to um, flags and uh, flags and z one is equal to zero. So we can now output this. And hopefully, I'm just going to double check that this looks right. Uh, yep, to controller and then from controller. Okay. And then we'll do let's uh, is command is equal to flags and two is equal to two. So I'm just gonna assert is command because I don't think we have any data packets in here. Yes, okay. So now we're like really, really, really strict on the parsing, which is important. Um, I just wanna make sure we get it right. So true, false, true, false. This looks good. Um, okay, so now we can have, we'll do an enum quick. Uh, enum of uh, BT traffic. Actually, we'll just call it traffic. And inbound and outbound. And then we'll do traffic is a vector of traffic. So we will parse this. And then we'll do uh, self.traffic.push. Um, and then data, let data is equal to pointer included length. Self traffic push uh, traffic. And this is uh, inbound or outbound. Inbound of data dot into. So if to controller, then it's outbound. Otherwise, it's inbound. So this is this should be outbound. Uh, you are fast at writing Rust. Uh, do you normally do everything in Rust? Do you prefer it over C++? I've been doing everything for the past two or three years in Rust. Um, I love it. And uh, in this case, I'm working in a no standard. So uh, we're kind of doing a weird target of doing MIPS on Android, which is not a supported target for uh, Rust. So we're kind of hacking it up. So we have to manually, we can't use some of that uh, features of Rust that let us like read files. We have to manually use libc. Um, we also had to like implement the Rust allocator, but since we had libc, we didn't really have to do much. But um, yeah, I, I love Rust. I, you know, I have a lot of complaints about certain things in it, but um, it, the, I, I don't have a language with fewer complaints than Rust, if that makes sense. So make a new vector there. And now we should, once we run parse, now we'll have all of the traffic. Uh, this, and we can do snoop dot traffic after we parsed it. And let's get rid of this print. 
And we should hopefully, oops, uh, can't be formatted. Let's make that formatable. Uh, drive debug. And now we'll get a nice pretty print of all the inbound and outbound traffic. Of course, it's slow because it's printing over ADB. Um, but anyways, this is all of the sent and received packets. So then what I can do is now that we have snoop parsed, um, let's do a, um, we want to do reset and go fast. And I think I can safely, we'll do bt.replay snoop. So we'll reset the device, we'll hard kick it. And let me make sure Bluetooth is off. Uh, uh, it is not, so we'll send the eight command, which will tear down Bluetooth. That is now off. Okay, so at this point, we will hard kick it, which will power cycle the Bluetooth chip. We'll open up a serial port. We'll send a reset HCI command. We'll set the baud rate to a higher speed. And then we'll just simply start replaying this. And let's see if anywhere in the log uh, so I care about things, display filter string, baud. So this sends the baud rate and here it also sets it, this sets it to, since we're replaying, I need to make sure that it doesn't, uh, configure itself into an unusable state. So that baud rate's fine. Um, you know, I wonder if after sending a reset, the baud rate is dropped back down. We might need to write a very, very, very basic parser to handle the baud rate changes when we're sending the replay, but uh, whatever. So BT replay, this will now take a, uh, that will take a reference to a snoop. So, and then we will do uh, up here, we do a fn replay uh, self, and we'll take a snoop, which is a bt snoop parser. And then what we should be able to do is for uh, uh, four packets. Uh, what's the build system like? Uh, cargo manages everything. You don't you don't do anything with the build system. It's all the build layout is implied by the like uses of different modules. There's no header subsystem. You don't, uh, things are incrementally built. If you only change one file, you don't have to worry about figuring out all the dependencies and headers and all that stuff. It's uh, pretty awesome. So for packet in snoop dot, uh, what did I call them? Traffic, for packet in snoop dot traffic, then we will match on uh, packet, and if it is uh, uh, traffic outbound, then we want to uh, send a packet, sending this, and packet, and traffic inbound, uh, expected, print, expected, this. Okay, so what's this doing? Um, red one byte, bread is not equal to that. What? Where's that at? That's at 107? Oh, we had this in a loop. We had some like debug crap. Okay. So this will reset it. And then this is what it wants to send and what it expects back. And we can actually format that a little bit cleaner. Um, expected. We'll do uh, pound x, uh, pound o2x, uh, actually o2x. So there we go. So this is showing us kind of the traffic that we want to send, and now we have to actually send it. So we'll do, I think we might manually send it here. In this case, we will do a uh, libc write of the request uh, here.
Oops. Uh, we've got some indentation issues here. We'll just uh, whack this down here and this to here. So instead of request, this will be packet, packet, and packet. Failed to write uh, replay packet. So this might fail. No, that didn't fail. That, I was able to write all of those packets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Self dot read bytes. Uh, not read bytes. We want uh, go fast. Read event. So read event will read back um, actual is equal to this. And then we can uh, assert actual is equal to expected. I, do you guys think this is going to work? Do you think I can just replay this and it's going to work just fine? Um, uh, yeah, this should work. Uh, bread. Okay, so that failed to read. Let's see how deep this is going. So print writing packet here, O2X packet. I'm curious how far this is getting. Okay, so we are, we send a, uh, we send a reset and then we send an update baud rate. So I think when we do a reset, I need to change the baud rate uh, here. So we're actually going to send the reset and stuff. So we'll just do this. This will open it at the default baud rate. And so then we send the baud rate command. Wait. So we send an uh, we send an 01 030 COO. We get this response back. Uh, blah blah blah. What is this? Uh, then we write this packet, which is an update baud rate, and then we fail to receive. So that lines up with um, this baud rate change. So let me see. I'm going to add a custom special case, which is um, we're going to do uh, this will update the baud rate here. So we'll do uh, fn reconfigure baud self this. We know they only ever set it to this 3 million. So that should work. So this will get the state and it will just set the baud rate that we're using for the file descriptor that we have open with the serial device. Um, here we will, um, if, if the packet response is this. So if um, actual is equal to b x 4 e 4 x one x 18 x f c x o So this is saying it's responding to an update baud rate packet. We, we just know that it's only ever setting it to this 3 million. So print updating baud rate. And then we can do self dot update uh, update. What did I call it? Reconfigure baud. Okay. Uh, so, oops. Self dot reconfigure baud. Uh, this and print setting baud rates. Maybe I put a print in the other one. I can't remember. So setting baud rate, then assertion failed. Let's see, we're doing this. We send this event. We then send this command to update the baud rate to 3 million. Then we get a response, which is the, uh, let me print out the responses as well. Got response. OTX. Uh, 
running packet, got response inbound. That 4E0413CO. Then we send this, which is correct. Then we get a response, which is 4E4118FCOO. Then we send a 114COO. And for some reason, that's that read is failing. And this is on read local name. Um, 114COO. Uh, reconfigure baud. This will set the O speed. Uh, huh. Print red header this. It's possible maybe we can get a partial read, like a one byte read. So let's see what happens. Oh, well, adding that print apparently changed it. Uh, red header three, assertion failed bread equal to payload capacity. Okay, so it was failing down here. I think I need to make a, um, we'll make a read all routine. Uh, this will take an FD, which is an I32, and then it will take a buffer, which is a mutable slice of U8s. Uh, reads from FD forever until buff is completely filled. So then we can do a unsafe. Uh, we'll do let mute ii is equal to zero while ii is less than buff.len um, let remain is equal to buff.len minus ii libc read from fd to buff uh, ii dot as mute pointer and remain and we want to uh, let bread is equal to this. Assert bread is equal to zero, or greater than zero. Failed to read all. And then ii plus equals bread. And then we'll also, this is really pedantic. Uh, And that needs to be a U size. We got a couple casting things. This needs to be converted to this. Uh, 70 remain. Yep, so at this point, uh, we know it's greater than zero, so we can do uh, bread is equal to bread as U size. So we'll replace it with an unsigned version. Okay, so I think this is right. Uh, I is just zero while it's less than buff len. Remain is the number of remaining bytes. Uh, then we try to read that much, make sure that we got something, make sure that it was within bounds. And then that is, that's it, I think. So here we'll do uh, read all of self.fd mute header. So, and then this one will be uh, payload. And this will be a, we can use this syntax, oops. OU8 of payload size. So we read the payload. So that will loop, and we don't have vec. I think that is right here. I'm just taking a guess, I might be wrong. Uh, vec, couldn't determine resolution for macro vec. Try simplifying, uh, okay. Um, let me see where that is put, oops. We'll do this, uh, rust vec macro. 
had some standard vec, but I think there are standard vec, standard vec, alloc vec. Is it that one? It's just directly in there. Use alloc vec. That should hopefully give us access to that macro. And fill the read all. Okay, so now let's keep track of the packets. Got response. Um, let's, we can just do this. Print uh, packet number this and I right, plus one because uh, they're one indexed in uh, in Wireshark. So let's see how far we're making it through. But this is looking good. We're like, we're pretty deep. We are at, we're failing at 317, which is probably a reset. Yeah, it just did a reset and then I'm failing to read all. So I think on resets, I also need to change the baud rate back down. So we'll go to uh, reconfigure baud. And then this will be baud. And I think this is like an i32, I'm not sure. So reconfigure baud libc b31234567. I think that's right. Uh, it is a u32. That's fine. Just change that. And then here, so if uh, we just set the baud rate and then else if actual is equal to b x, I'm looking at the reset. This is an 040E, 0401, 030C, 00. Uh, resetting HCI. One one five two hundred. Uh, four E four one E C O. Um, we just sent a reset command. Please. Uh, resetting HCI. Resetting HCI. Hmm. Packet number, writing packet. Is that breaking it? What is the default? I wonder what the def I feel like the default is 115.200. Uh, but this updates the baud rate. Okay, why is that? It's not 9600, is it? No. Three million? Three million works in that case. In that case, it doesn't. Writing packet, that's packet three, 315. It's a reset. And then, maybe we just cheat. Uh, else if, uh, else if, Let's see, we can cheat here. Else if ii is equal to ii plus one is equal to 317. So that should print right before we fail. Oh wait, uh, we want it on 316. Yeah. Okay, so that's failing, wait, 316. Oh, are we failing to read on that reset? Maybe we have to set the baud rate on after the reset itself. Uh, send a reset. So we're sending 315 out, then we're trying to receive 316 and we're failing. Okay, I think that's what it is. I think we have to set the baud on the send in this case. So if 
packet is equal to bx uh, 0103COO. And this is uh, D2. Resetting HCI, 115200. All right. All right. Did we do it? No. Nope. Damn it. Is that having an effect? Okay. Like, isn't that what we start off with? 115200? Uh, I can get rid of this non-canon. This is to have a timeout. I don't think that's affecting us. No. Unless I'm not able to re... Maybe if I get that attribute. Reconfigure baud. We flush, we get this. We got an attribute. What if we flush again at the end? That's really strange. Like, is it? Let me see if I get rid of this, if this works. Because this should effectively knop it. Okay, so this is having, there's a side effect here. Let me put the term iOS in here, in my Bluetooth state. This will be term iOS. I'm guessing this is like this. And 117. Uh, term iOS, term iOS. Okay, so now we have that. And we should be able to change this now. Go fast, reconfigure baud, and instead we will simply change our own baud rates and set that attribute instead. And what are we doing? Self term minus uh, self here. Okay. Uh, 296, this needs to be mutable, yep. And down here, this needs to be mutable as well. Okay. That's really strange. Why am I not able to set that? Huh. Why would I not be able to change that baud rate? Like, what if if we do this? This should ha this should have no effect. Yeah. So that's fine. So for some reason, um, maybe this is failing. Let me uh, s trace it. We can bring over this terminal and s. Sorry. Oops, s trace dot slash mix rust. And that failed there, failed to read all. And we tried the IOCTL to set the baud rate and we got, I mean, that succeeded. Huh. What would cause that? Set attributes. Flush, flush, unless I just need to reopen it. I don't know. I don't think, I, oh, maybe I do need to reopen it? Uh, can you not dynamically change the baud rate of something? I feel like that is not, that's just not how it works. So we could maybe have um, we will do this. Uh, we can replace ourselves with a new Bluetooth serial, I think. We'll do this. And then up here on a reset, we will do 
self is equal to that. So we'll we'll close and reopen. Um, the baud rate has to be also handled on the other side. Yeah, I think the device is changing its baud rate. Um, uh, let me see if this. I'm gonna see what happens when I just reopen the file descriptor. Failed to read all. Get it. Resetting HCI. Packet number two. Failed to read all. We're getting an error. Let's uh let's see what the error is. Uh failed to read all and then this will just be bread. Failed to read all uh, zero. So we got an EOF. Let's see. Let's see if this infinitely loops. Maybe we just consume that EOF. No, that's infinitely looping. Uh, hmm. Changing baud rate. Oh, it's fine. The The stream's not going to be too much longer. I actually have a, a dinner planned tonight. So it's probably only going to run for a, another hour. But uh, what is going on here? Uh, and yeah, these are sending reset commands. Uh... Reset. Hmm. What's confusing to me here is why, okay, read all. That's read event. Uh, I don't think we have to RF kill it. That would make no sense. Resetting, close FD, reopen it. If we do this, we should see a failure like immediately. Yeah, negative one, because it's an invalid FD. So we are reopening the serial device. That's just really strange, because if I just do nothing here, it works a bit and then it fails later. Uh, so we'll do if I I is equal to three fifteen. If I plus one is equal to three fifteen and that. Uh so we'll do the close and reopen. I don't hmm. We send the reset and we like completely reopen the serial device. Like the only thing that would make sense to me here update baud rate, write the Bluetooth address, then it resets it. Like I'm I'm curious if it's reopening handles or something. I wonder if I can just not have the reset. Can I just get rid of it? We'll just try this. Um, D5, D4, oh, we wanted D5, oh well. Uh, if it's this, we want to drop it. Not dropping. So we'll just completely drop those reset packets because hopefully they don't matter. Uh, failed to read all zero. That makes sense because we now have to drop it here. D4, D3, D4. So if this, this is if expected. Um, 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I did this wrong. I think I made a mistake. Uh, reset. Reset. Complete 4E413. Uh, yeah. I think I just did this wrong. So, uh, I'm guessing you send a reset and then you get the response. So, we'll comment this out. Uh, actually, we'll comment these out. Resetting HCI. And we'll see if we get a response. Uh, resetting HCI. We get that response. Um, and then here. So we're able to read that. And this needs to change. This needs to be a reset complete. E, X04, X01, X03, X. We'll see XO. Uh, oh, we do want a baud rate one. Hmm. 4E, 4, 4, 18, uh, 18, that's the baud rate, right? Yeah. Update baud rate complete. 4E, 4, 4, 1, 18 FCOO, and then. B X. Uh, this is the set reset, and then this is the reset complete. Oh, are we not getting the reset complete? Resetting HCI packet number three sixteen should be the, we're expecting a response, which is that the reset is complete. And we're not getting that. And I'm not sure why. Um, hmm. Interesting. Okay, so we'll go back to trying this. Let's just drop the reset. Uh, continue. Dropping. So that fails there because we don't have this. So D1, oops, D, D2 on this. So if, oops, if the expected value. We're just gonna ignore that. So on resets, we just don't reset. Uh, that is now on 317. So we send an update baud rate and we're not getting a response. Oh, you know what? After launch RAM, there was a pretty big s delay. Like if we look at this, it, it took a pretty good break after launch RAM. So let's take a look at that. Let's see if uh, launch RAM complete. So this is else if actual is equal to BX04, X01, X4E, XFC, XO. Uh, print launched RAM. Uh, libc sleep one. And then maybe we can, maybe we're fine now. Launch RAM. Call the unsafe. Yep. Maybe it's in the spec to like sleep there. No. So launch RAM, packet number 315 is a reset. Uh, so we'll drop the resets, see what happens. Launching RAM, 318. We're just like not able to get a response after launch RAM. Um.
I think that's what's happening. I think launch, something's dying when we run launch RAM. This firmware, right? Like, I would assume it's just writing the blob. I don't think it encodes this in any way. Download mini driver command. It acknowledges that, then we write firmware. Let's see if this... I don't know if it, like... I'm curious if I can just directly replay this, because if they change things or addresses change, then it's possible that we can't just replay these packets. Right firmware. Yeah, I was wondering if it was a timing related thing, but I don't think it is, because now I'm sleeping after the launch RAM. And it looks like it does these as fast as possible. So it does a, uh, sends a download mini driver command, which responds. There's a little bit of a pause here, but I don't think that's necessary. Then we're writing the firmware, writing the firmware, and then finally we do launch RAM. I think launch RAM is, is what's killing us. Then we send a reset. Let's see if we get rid of launch RAM if we're, um, if everything's hunky-dory. So, I don't think the reset thing is an issue anymore. 1, 4, E, F, C, 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is launch RAM. And then on this, which is the inbound, this is the launch RAM response. E, 0, 4, 0, 1, 4, E, F, C, 0, 0. Uh, huh. So that's 313, which is launch RAM, which we drop. Uh, and then we drop the launch RAM. And we send a 315. We send a reset. We get the response for the reset. That we, we then send a 317, update baud rate. Um... And we get a response, do we? We don't get a response on update baud rate for some reason. 18FC6, COC6, TD, okay. Let's take a look at some code that does the uh, firmware stuff. Uh, I think this one. So this is downloads the Patrium stuff. Um, this is like a small little application that does this. And so it parses the command line, it and it's the UR, it resets proc reset, what's that? I think that sends the HCI reset command, it reads an event. Uh, send command, download mini driver, okay. So then, if there's a baud rate we want to use, then we do that. Then, if there's an FD, we call patch RAM. And patch RAM sends the download mini driver command, uh, which we do. So that's one of the very early things we do. Um, so we update the baud rate, we read the local name, we then send the download mini driver command we get a, a valid response, and then we start writing out the firmware, and let's see how they do that. So this is, if not no two bytes, what is that? This must be a workaround. Skips waiting for two byte configuration. Newer chips do not generate these two bytes. I... I don't think we have to do that, because otherwise things would be like completely unaligned. Then we read the FD, and we write, we send a write firmware. Oh, we construct HCD file FD. Uh, buffer that. 
and the address is this, and then this is the firmware. Um, read HCD file to buffer four. Uh, really? And then get buffer three. So we read the FD, we read three bytes from the FB. I, I guess the HCD file is probably a list of raw commands to send. Then if you use baud rate for download, oh, after, after we're done sending it, it looks like it resets the rate. So let's try that. So write firmware, we do that in a loop while there are bytes. Then at this point it's complete. And apparently we're supposed to, so that's read, send HCI command buffer, length plus one. Oh, um, and then at the end it does a proc reset. So it, it does the launch RAM, and then I think I have to set the baud rate here. So after launch RAM, so these are probably the commands from the file directly. If we look at that um, file, uh, that is this, uh, vim, evil, uh, let's see. I gotta find where that VT uh, vendor, okay, adv pull act firmware bcm4330 bcm4330.hcd um and then xxd uh, d1 or what is it uh g1 so the last thing it sends is it looks like it's sending this reset this one e4 efc 4 fffff So yeah, that's the last command. And once that last command is sent, um, we read an event, which is the response to the launch RAM complete. And then we send it a reset, which is here. But it looks like we have to set the baud rate. So I'm guessing that's just something that we have to do. So we get rid of all this stuff now. We write the packets, get the response. If it's this, we're setting the baud rate. Otherwise, if the actual is equal to this, bx, we're looking for the uh, command complete for launch RAM. 04, OE, 04, 01, 4E, FC, 00. Launch RAM complete. Um, Self.reconfigure baud, libc b... 115.200. And this does, it sets the O speed and the I speed, and then it sets the attribute. So I think this is now doing what they do. Oh, uh, that got to 372. 372, 372, set LE rand, set the LE random, huh, and then this is command complete, I'm guessing this might vary, so we might have to special case a couple of these, um, assertion failed, this is good, I, th I think we're, uh, we're almost there. <laughs> We've almost programmed the, the Bluetooth chip. This is pretty cool. Um, so we'll print got response this. Uh, wait, got response. Wait, how is packet in scope? Actual. So this is the match. Uh, observed traffic and 
we're going to print the actual and expected. And we'll see what this looks like. So this is saying at 372, we expected this and we got this. So I think what we'll do is special case this one. And hopefully there aren't too many other random things that might vary. So this will now do, um, uh, what are we gonna do here? For e, okay. So if actual is equal, uh, if actual dot dot eight, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. If this is equal to, honestly, I think we can just do this. Um, I think we can just assert this. We just wanna make sure that the status codes and the command matched up. But I don't think we actually care about the raw payload. So unless we, it expects us to re, uh, retransmit something back to it after it sends us. So that was 426. That's it. That's done. We sent all of the commands. So awesome. Uh, only check status command type, etc. No need for checking the raw payload. It can vary on things like setting random variables, uh, le, and stuff. All right, so great. This now has programmed the device to the running state that it is in. Um, uh, this programs it back to the state that it is in that, uh, oops. Did those prints matter? They, they, they really shouldn't. Uh, what was this one? Writing packet, this. Packet this pointer. Packet.lin. I wonder if something's getting optimized out there. I don't. I might be doing something wrong with unsafe. I don't know. Whatever. This works. Uh. Uh, get add bt snoop, create probe ranges, probe logs, and uh, sets up device to state that Android does based on Android's uh, HCI log. Make sure it works from the start. Okay. So yeah, now we've replayed this and now the device is in the state that it is in when Android uses it. So now I should be able to do BT dump and let's, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, time stamped is unused. Let's clear up some of these warnings. 123, unnecessary unsafe block. Uh, oh, we do nothing unsafe in here anymore. Nice, clean, and that's dumping the, uh, this is now dumping the firmware in that current state. So hopefully this works. I'm gonna actually do some quick tests I don't know why I wasn't able to read that last byte, the FF byte. So I'm gonna do a quick test. Um, I'm gonna make a new range and it's just gonna be 8FF002 that. And I just wanna see if I can get that reading. Uh, could not read 8FF, could not. Read that. Why not? 
Uh, read bytes. We send the read byte here. We take in an address. We send uh, an FCOA1. Uh, take the address plus bytes. Wait. That's a bug. Let me get rid of this bytes shit. We're going to turn this into read byte. So reading multiple bytes wasn't working, um, and that's fine. So read byte, and instead, I think we had a bug there. I think we were adding one. This makes a lot of sense. So 1AFC0504, then we send the address as those. We uh, write it out. We get the bytes read. Um, I think here I want to do the, I don't want to touch this too much because it works, but let response is equal to uh, self dot read event. Uh, if response dot one is not equal to eight times bytes, well, let's just say, it's not equal to eight, filled the read, get the pointer for all the things in bytes. If pointer is zero, wait, what is this? This outputs, uh, we should only give a single U8 out, read byte, this, ret, and this, and uh, pointer seven. So send that, write it out, get the response, and then we validate the response is what we want, and then we grab the one byte that we care about, which is the response. It's not equal to that, return error, assert on all of those. I think we wanna assert here now. Because this should never fail. Um, wait, there we go. Assert that it is an event. We got a command complete. Number of remaining bytes. Number of opcode or number of command packets. And the opcode and the status. And then here we write out that. And then this. There will be a bunch of things. Read bytes. This is now this read bytes this uh and this is bytes as const u8 and then we have one more read byte yeah so i think this will work we shouldn't get the issue on the ff anymore uh arm arm star assertion failed what oh i uh i deleted that file uh this okay so we run all the commands, we reset the device, and now we're able to read all the way to FF. Good, 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 good. Okay, that's what I wanted. Um, dump. And now we get rid of this. ROM. And that. And this. And this. And let me run my tool quick. Uh, create program ranges. So this is going to tell me all the ranges. So E4 FF, a million to 220 FFF, and 28 to uh, 292. So that to that, E to this. So we did see this one we had at 7 FF. I wonder if they have 512 bit pages. Let me um, switch over to. 
uh, we'll reprogram the device. We'll do everything, and then we'll do our probe. Uh, BT dot. Uh, what was it? Probe, and then we'll probe at 512 byte granularity instead. That maybe will pick us up some more regions that we are missing. Uh, probe. And then we'll get new probe tables here. And we might pick up some new addresses that we don't have. It's not probe. It's, uh, oh, it is probe. Probe. I think I just want this. We'll just put this here. If true, probe memory ranges. We'll go here for address in this. Whoop. Probing that. And then, if true, probe memory ranges, and then we can get rid of this probe routine. Okay, so probing, there's an error, hard reset. Uh, hmm. I need to do this correctly. This. Oh, on errors, we need to run that whole replay through again. Oh, gross. It's probing all those things. Uh, so let's see if this picks up more memory ranges than what we had. It'll be a little bit slower, so I'm going to run this over here. Um, I don't want to hard kick it. I think just this, if we drop it, we don't need to reopen it either. I think we can just send a reset. Uh, well, we might need to hard kick it if it really drops. If there was an error, just ignore it for now. See, let's see if this works or if this hangs. This might get stuck. So now we have the uh, MIPS Rust, and we'll tee this to um, probe log.txt. So, sorry about the font. I know it's not going to be too readable, but it's just going through all the 512-byte offsets uh, filled in read all. Uh, okay, we might have to do this then. Drop it. I don't want to hard kick it. I know we can reset. I, I don't think a reset should affect state. We might have to hard kick it. Do, 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 do. Uh, unexpected response from reset command. Interesting. Hmm. I might just use the existing ranges that I have. Hopefully that will be maybe acceptable. Whatever. We'll 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 just use those for now. No, nah, I'm not happy about it. So get rid of the stop the probe. We'll run BT dump, this, and then the range, and this one we'll just leave as 7FF. And this will fully reset the device and reprogram it, and then it will dump all of the regions as they are used. And hopefully this will give us a very, very, very clean database. But I think the reason we... Uh, we're having an error when we tried to load the new one into Ghidra is because I had that plus one error. I had an off by one, uh, which I kind of suspected. So now we just pretty much wait for this to happen. ROM is the largest region here. Um, actually, I don't know what this RAM, I don't know what this region is. But uh, what do we have open in our program? We have... We want at least the zero. We want, so 
0 to 8 FFFF is ROM. Scratch is E to E4 FFF. Good. And then RAM is 200,000 to 220 FFF. And we're just picking up this start of that too because I guess there's some at 100K. And then dispatch tables are at 280 to this 2927FF. So this will hopefully be a little bit better. We just have to wait. Um, actually, let me change. I think I can speed this up. What up, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We shouldn't be late. Yeah, because apparently it's hard to get seats if you're late. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Um, I want to... I think I want to go fast. I'll, I'll do another go fast after re replay. I think this will hopefully speed it up a bit. I don't know if that sped it up. Uh, I'm start up in... And let's see if we can get all the ranges going. F, 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 F. So these are all the ranges that I know of, and we'll just give it a shot. It's fast. You like how fast this is? You dumped them? Yeah, we're dumping. Taking a big dump. Oh, yeah, nice. Yup. We're dumping at like this is this is probably like hundreds of bytes per second. Incredible. <laughs> it's good. So five percent, and uh, now we just literally have to wait. We we can't do anything until this is done. Are you dumping like one bite at a time? Yup. Oh, yup. <laughs> yup. But I know all the regions. This might not be perfect because I saw some things that were like 7FF rather than FFF. So I think they might use like 512 byte or like 2K pages or something. So I need to do a rescan, but I just didn't want to waste people's time. This is, this is close enough. <laughs> so, and then we'll load this guy up in uh, Ghidra and get that going. But. I don't know what time is it? It's five thirty ish. Five. Probably like four five. minutes. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, do do do. <sighs> Ghidra. Ghidra. You should read a stub that lets you dump faster. I, I probably will. That will probably be one of the first yeah. opcodes we add is like... Yeah, it's like dump me up, Dump arbitrary. Up, yeah, up to a page or something. Because <laughs> this is brutal. This does suck. <laughs> but I think ROM is the biggest region. Actually, this region's pretty big. This, like, mm. different RAM one scratches fast. So, uh, what's the dot dot equals range syntax in Rust? It is um, an inclusive range. So basically, if you iterate over this, you will, like, if you did a for loop with this as your range, you would get ii equals 8 fffff. Um, whereas if you don't have the equals, you'd only get fffe. So, it's, a, it's pretty handy. Uh, it's nice because it allows you to use like a U32 to encode something that goes up to max int. Uh, is it new in 2018? No, I think it's actually like a couple years old. It might not have been stable until recently, but uh, I think it's pretty old. Range inclusive. Stable in 1.26, which is probably a year to a year and a half ago. So, but yeah, range inclusive is pretty cool. But, yep, we're just waiting. We uh, don't really have anything we can do. Oh, why is it so slow?
I don't think there's really any way I can make this faster. I think it's just bottlenecking on cereal. I don't think it. I don't think this is bottlenecking on my own stuff at all. What's the total size of RAM and ROM? So, uh, actually, we had a manual up for it, but maybe not anymore. Yeah, so I think the RAM is like 526k, and the or the ROM is like 526k, and the RAM is like 192k or something. I did change the baud rate. I did set it to uh, to go fast, which sets it to uh, three megabit. But that's clearly it's clearly not running at three megabit. But it's probably overhead and commands and parsing and you know, just delays and going to the kernel and reads and writes and, and whatever. Because we are doing a byte at a time, which is causing probably a lot of spam to the, the device. But I just don't want to screw with something that works. So, like, this this works. I don't know if you, you saw, but I... On Android, you can do... Um, uh, you can set up a like Bluetooth snoop log in the like the developer oh, yeah. options. Yeah. So and that that logs to a file all the HCI traffic, which you can actually open that file directly in Wireshark, which is kind of cool. Yeah, well, I was gonna ask how you how you got that up actually. Yeah, so you're oh, able to are just you, like a, a tailing it or something. Or? Uh, so this is just the whole log. So I actually started Bluetooth on Android. I waited like 20 seconds for it to be stable. Mm -hmm. And then I just grabbed the log off oh. it, but like um, we can see kind of a standard thing. It oh, keep clicking on it. Uh, here we'll bring this over here. Um, it re it sends the reset command. It then updates the baud rate. It reads this local name to get like the firmware yeah. or the name of the device, so mm -hmm. it probably could select the firmware. And then it writes the firmware. Um, and the firmware is actually really interesting. The firmware is just a list of Bluetooth commands. Yeah, like this launch RAM is in the the firmware. The firmware image has like this command. Well, how does how does that work? It, I mean, it just it just reads the file and sends the commands as if they're raw commands. And why? Oh, is it just on on the flash chip? Like the firmware is just there and it loads it over. It it's on somewhere on the file system yeah, on it just, Android. It just loads it over serial. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So then it sends a reset, updates baud rate, and here it is like doing normal stuff. It goes into inquiry mode and like this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. This is what Android did. And I literally, I wrote a parser for this file format. And then I replay the log. And then I validate that the responses are the same for all of it. And oh, it's yeah, like. Because you killed it and reset yep. it. I see. So I like, I use the. Uh, what is it called? The. Um, RF kill, mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure it like controls a physical power line to the Bluetooth chip. Probably. And it's like, so I send zero and then it, so it turns off and then I send one. So it like hard resets it in completely. And then I just replay this, which is exactly what Android does. And then I'm doing a dump. So it should be in the state, all the RAM and ROM. Obviously things are dynamically changing as they're being used in RAM, but like, the things that don't change should be in the right shape and the patch should be applied mm -hmm. and like everything should be yeah. good. Well, that makes updating the firmware on them pretty easy because it's just shipped with, like you can just ship that as part of your like firmware blob. Yeah. Like for your Android update. Yeah. Um, BT adapter doesn't work without sending some binary blobs. No, um, it has ROM on board that works, but this is a patch that's applied to it. Um, I just want to make sure we're doing research on how it actually looks, like how it's set up in reality. Um, and I'm trying to do this dump without resetting it at all. So I'm trying to get all of it in one swoop on the same boot. Well, so that way- poke any MMIO rigs or anything. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I think I know what to skip over. Okay. <laughs> this one's gonna be a doozy. This is gonna take like 10, oh. 15 minutes. <laughs> Have you like, Oh, you had, this is the first time you ever dumped it? No, I've dumped it before, but like I had to reset it every like five seconds. I would get a couple bites out. I'd reset it. I was, I, see. I had Android using it. I was relying on Android like to initializing it and I was racing it for commands and like trying to get things off the serial port before Bluetooth did. Yeah. Like, yeah, I did it in a shitty way. So you don't know if... 
the well are these physical addresses or these are this? physical yeah so we don't know if there is like a, a mirroring of like an uncached mirror i think there is there? uncached mirroring on this so I, see. I i think ram starts at the like 200 um i think i had it documented somewhere but i think ram starts at like 200 something i think there are like uncached mirrors in here but I see. You know, if it lets me read it, I'm just reading it. I'm just reading everything yeah, it allows fine. me to. Yeah. And I probed these at a 4K granularity. And then, I, so I read the first byte out of each page. Mm -hmm. And if I successfully was able to read the byte, I just assumed that that page is a real thing. Yeah. And then I go to read all the 4K out of it. Um, some of these things failed on reading all the way up to the last 4K. So I like set them down to the 7FF. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that makes sense. So it's probably just a different page size or something. But, but yeah. You have the data sheet, right? It's like ARM32, I assume. Uh, yeah, it's ARM32, it's V7A ARM, but it's only in thumb mode. Okay. So yeah, the that's pretty common for, yeah. for stuff like that. So luckily Ghidra allows you to say like, yo, everything's in thumb. <laughs> <laughs> but it seemed to have an issue. There was a branch. It, was, it must have been handwritten code. There's a branch to a thumb function that didn't have plus one to the target. And like Ghidra was like, oh, you're clearly doing ARM. It was probably handwritten and it probably doesn't fail because in this chip, uh, if you jump like to, hard -coded or it's hard coded to always be thumb mode. So like- Do you think that's like a custom something going on for that? Cause I feel like that's not standard. Um, I think it's a standard chip you can get for some of the cheaper low power devices. Okay. I'm quite frankly, Broadcom probably uh, fabs probably their have, own. Yeah, they, probably they probably bought the like uh, they probably bought an ARM yeah, like, core and then redesigned it a bit. Bought like fifty million of these. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we have the ROM, and let me just uh, load up that new ROM that we have. Um, let's see, we'll go over here. Uh, see Bluetooth. A good dumps. Uh, ADB pull data data local temp. This is dump. Oh 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 oh. Do you like that tab complete on ADB, dude? Oh yeah. <laughs> so now we'll get rid of this because this one was fucked. I had an off by one error and I was like reading one byte offset for everything, and Ghidra wasn't opening the file, which I'm not surprised because I it was off. So, oops, we want to go up a directory. This one is wrong. So we want to delete that. RM, RF, uh, Bluetooth, Thumper, uh, BCM, Ford. There we go. So go up and good dumps. So this is where we're going to start. Pick the language. Uh, this is ARM v7 little endian default. Um, and then the base address is just zero on this and we're going to call this ROM and, uh, okay. So that's loaded up. And now if we open this, it's going to ask us to analyze. We have to say no, cause we have to set that thumb bit first. Oh, I see. That's going to be like, has not oh, been analyzed. Analyze. Not at all. I've like... Ida really seems to struggle with reanalysis. This seems to be know, pretty like, good. If I ever make a mistake, it's just like reload the <laughs> Reload the <laughs> Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so what do we got? Let's make sure these line up. Uh, 0042200120000C9. And then let's go to kind of a random location. Let's go to this uh, command dispatch. Right. Why? Oh, I. What's it complaining about? There we go. So here we'll go to five six five C, and we should see a C O F three O nine O one. Okay. So these lined up. These new dumps are looking good. So now we're just waiting for that RAM to come in. So to set the thumb mode, you you right click in this window it kind of took a while to find right click in your processor options and then you like what do you want mm -hmm. oh well t mode always one yep. done um and then we can change the permissions on this because we know this is rom 
so we make it non-writable and it's readable and executable. So, cool. yeah, it's pretty sweet. And like, you can just add, like add the program and then I'll add things and you pick a different base and it just keeps adding it. So you can just add more and more regions. You can do that in Ida, but for some reason it never has worked for me. Like when I do it, it never can analyze correctly across those boundaries. Yeah, like I remember do, uh, doing the like Android kernel stuff and it's switching between like arm thumb and like arm 64 and shit. Yeah. And it's like, it's just <laughs> like, oh, it's not code. <laughs> So, yeah, this is really solid. Actually, we'll just make a new database. So, auto analyze, analyze, and like, it just starts chugging. Like, look at this, dude. This is a raw what? fucking firmware. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> like, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. That is a lot more readable than what? Wait, oh, that's just a different function. Or? Uh, oh, this, is this one. This is. Uh, this is a different one. This is the one before, but it's honestly pretty fast for analysis. Mm -hmm. Like people made the memes about how slow it is to analyze things, but like. I don't know. I'd have pretty slow too. Yeah. And everything's usable while it's analyzing. I haven't really had any issues like navigating or using using the tool while it's analyzing. But it's it's impressive. <laughs> it's really impressive. Fifty percent on our dump. What don't you like about Giga? Um. Do yeah, you have any gripes? Um, it, uh, sometimes when registers are reused, they get named the same thing. So like this could maybe be EAX and like then forward things like everything that returns into EAX has that name of the variable, which is kind of annoying because I don't think it's SSA, but that's something that can easily be filled up or fixed up with like some maybe configuration or something. I'm sure someone can figure that out. Um, but... Yeah. And they're open sourcing at the end of the month, or I think that's now? the plan. Okay. But there we go. It's done. It's done analyzing. <laughs> and look, it found fucking everything. Like this is not code. <laughs> Here, it's just Fs. This is, this is code. Like it finds everything so well. And then if we go to this function that we have already, open uh, F six five C. Like, this is without any of the assistance. This is what it looks like. And this looks a lot cleaner because this memory is not included in this dump right now. So it looks like some weird DREF. Mm -hmm. But once I fill in that memory, that will become it'll like be, an it'll, array it'll access. become an XREF. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you tried adding multiple files? Because, like, I know in, in IDA you can do, like, add binary files. Yeah, that's what, that's what this does. That's what it does. And it just works. You just give it this, okay. and then you give it a base and a name. And, like, Sick. it just fucking works, dude. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get that going when this comes in. We'll just reanalyze it when we pull in the... Mm -hmm. Actually, we can pull in the scratch space, uh, which is at... It is, I think, E. What's going on? So we pull in E, and we'll add this. Uh, I think I have a pop-up. Yeah, cancel. And the pop under is just due to my window manager. It's not an it's not a Ghidra issue. So this one we know is loaded at uh, e one two three four, and we want to name this scratch. And we're just loading it, and boom, and it's loaded. How did you get the names for the regions? Uh, just some of the documentation, and it like said there is a scratch region that's. 20k 20.5k in size i'm like oh it's this oh it's from the data sheet yeah okay. so it didn't tell me where the regions are but the it told me the length of it and it's like okay well this is clearly it so i haven't tried analyzing when i pull something new in like that i don't think there's any code in this so one thing that's cool is you can kind of select where you're looking so in this case i'm only looking at the scratch area that's why there's no more code but you can like go up and look at the whole project 
So you can easily like zoom into things. Ghidra is clunky because of Java. Honestly, this is less clunky than than Ida. Honestly, like I don't know how someone could say this is like it is. It probably could be faster in theory, but compared to Ida, I can actually fucking use it while analysis is running. It's like not frozen because I have analysis. And it looks like this is going. I think you can add regions and the analysis like works when you add regions. We might be able to keep this database around. Mm -hmm. What's the scratch region? I don't know. Uh, it just said there's a scratch region of a certain size. And so I just named it that. Um, I don't actually know what is in it. So we'll see once this is done analyzing. Uh, maybe this picked up some things in the scratch region. But yeah, apparently the analysis works really well. Like when you change things or modify things in a binary, you can just like reanalyze and it like works. So it does look kind of eclipsy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so that's just aesthetic. You, you can you can change that. There are a couple options for mm -hmm. the like, do you want GTK or whatever? I use Swing because you know it looks cool. You know, <laughs> I feel like I'm using a tool. So okay, let's see if it found any code in Scratch. Um, it did. It did find code in Scratch. So there's code in here. <laughs> so you think this is like patches? This might be where they put like yeah. a temporary loader when they're applying patches or something. Yeah. But like, there's code in here, and fucking look at this shit. And and it's like, yeah. oh, I want this to be a structure, and it's like. Yeah, I wonder if they, if for patches they like hook the first. Like beginning of a function. Oh, did that work? In this, in this case, that didn't work. Do like a hot patch type thing using the scratch. Yeah. Code? This could be like a RAM that is large enough that you can use it while patching, such that RAM can be completely blown away or something. Mm -hmm. um, the ID box. The ID box, yeah. So there is a, um, what is it? Parameter ID. Apparently, this helps a lot. What does it do? Um, creates parameter and local variables for a function. Oh, is this just, just like heuristic stuff for decoding? Yeah. So I think it doesn't create the locals and stuff by default without it. Mm. But yeah, it's it's crazy, dude. I don't know, like I don't know what world, what timeline we live in right now. <laughs> it is a dank timeline. <laughs> so we'll see if this changes. Like I haven't. I haven't reanalyzed, but given they have an option so easily to auto analyze, like I think they intend for you to apply analysis as you're going. And you can do single shots as well of like, I want to do specifically just this. I just want to look for strings and stuff. But it's yeah, it's is, recognition is, there a way for you is to, like nuts. map two variables together and then reanalyze. Or like if you You know what name I haven't variable? found a way to map. Okay. The, the equals key in yeah. Ida, I haven't found an equivalent for that. Okay. So, okay, so that created these locals like, uh, let's just hop to some random place. Uh, yeah. But like, it's so readable, dude. It's so readable. And this is almost done. <laughs> 95%. And then we'll get RAM in here. If you reanalyze, does it remove all your names and comments and stuff? I don't know. I would imagine. I don't think so. I can't. I can't imagine they would have that. It would just break too much. Yeah. I feel like Ida does that though. Yeah. Is that true? Um, Ida, I think keeps them around pretty good. I forget. I think it might prompt you. That's one thing I haven't seen is like a pop up that's like while doing things a pop-up. Ida has that all the time of like things popping up of like, are you sure you want to do this? Naming conflict, naming conflict. Well, yeah, there's no B-tree error. error. There's no one there. B-tree <laughs> error, fuck your database. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to Ida, it's an amazing tool. I'm, I have we're gripes with it, me. but like, we're yeah, we're just, we're just <laughs> memeing. But yeah, now we're getting this region. So we can now pull down the, I think it was, 100k and this is the biggest region in it this is ram and i bet we'll see our repeat in here we'll see repetition um so this is at 100k wait is it 100k yeah and this is called ram 
load that up. Okay. And now we have a big blob of RAM in here. And <laughs> auto analyze. Uh, actually, let's wait for this one because I think this is the region that I care about. This is the one that I've never been able to see yet. So I'm pretty excited about this region. 280. That one's done. So, and 280, 280, and this is like uh, unknown. Okay. So, and we're getting these regions. We might just want to bring these in as we're getting them. Fast. Yeah. 300k coming in, add to program, 300k, 303, uh, unknown 2, okay, let's save, I like how they grayed out, so it's like, you know you recently saved it, I don't know, it's just like a nice quality of life thing, see what happens, we just like, quadrupled the size so i expect the analysis will quadruple but yeah we're getting all these dumps out and we haven't reset the bluetooth chip like this is yeah. probably really clean um obviously we can't look at anything that's dynamically changing like heaps and stuff but like things that aren't changing probably pretty solid good <laughs> reading a bite at a time fucking kill me dude <laughs> Never done that before. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh. I I can't wait to see this start start to blue in. Mm -hmm. Give me that blue. It also kind of makes more sense that this is vertical than horizontal. <laughs> that it lines up with your scroll scroll bar. Yeah. I mean, I I think the horizontal thing is just because you're you're in graph view most of the time, and I yeah. Don't. So that's fair. In this, you seem to be in linear view more because you're you're pretty much only working in the decompiler. Because well, like, I haven't had like any issues you with have it. A decompiler. <laughs> Come on, where's that blue at? So there's also crazy shit in here. Look at the search things. Like what? You can search for these. You filter like, oh, I want to text search the program, but I'm only interested in the operands. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Filter. And then uh, That's actually search for address really tables. Nice I want to search for things that look like tables of addresses with alignment four. Oh, here are things that like are tables of pointers, like sequential pointers to valid yeah, I things. I feel like I've written out of scripts uh -huh, uh -huh. for that, like uh, about 20 Direct times. references. I don't know what this is. This is probably pretty cool. Um, instruction patterns. Mm -hmm. What do you, I, I bet I bet that would find chaos sims for you. <laughs> what do you What do you think you uh, what do you What do you think you need an, an instruction pattern finder for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no reason. Um, searching for scalars and strings and like, uh, matching instructions like the searching stuff. All of this flow stuff is kind of interesting. Um, that allows you to like select things based on like mm -hmm. what you have selected. But, uh, did it not pick up anything in the, in the RAM? Oh, you know what? There's probably nothing. This is all zeros. Yeah, I don't think there's anything relevant in this section of RAM. I think down here... There's some stuff there. There's some stuff. So I'm curious if it's failing to pick this stuff up or not. Did we add? We added unknown two. So we can go now to our to this function, this uh, five, this one. And this is now mapped in, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, That's yes. looking good. Yes, this is the, these are the function dispatches. Hell yeah. So if you reanalyze this, will that turn into like a pointer? Um, if I or is that already? Like I think I need to manually do it. So this is a byte. This one's a byte, and it's an array of bytes of eight. Uh, whoop. This is a uh, make this into an array of eight bytes, and now we see this, and this is the um, this is the max command number. 
So basically, this is the command ID. Uh, oops. Um, you're supposed to edit these. Uh, oops. At the function. Yeah. I see. So edit function signature. This returns a uh, pointer. This takes in a, um, I think this is a u short, which is the command ID. And then this is, what are we going to call this function? Um, look up command dispatch. There we go. And it like maps these off. This is to get the top part of it. And this is to get the bottom part of it. So this is like the, um, this is called the OGF. Uh, this is the like opcode group, which is like the top part of the command. And then this is the op, uh, this is the, like the OCF. The, the yeah, I vaguely remember this. Yeah, so basically if OGF is FCOO, if it's the vendor command, then OGF is capped at seven. Then we go down here and we, this is if it's not a vendor, but we only care about the vendor commands. Then it goes into this table to see, uh, to look up the max command number for that. And in this case, seven, you can send D5, mm -hmm. uh, so D4 and below you can send. And then this is going to be function pointers. And this will be eight of these. Um, this will be data pointer and then data array. And this should be eight entries as well because it's indexed by the OGF, which is capped at eight. Uh, yes. And we, uh, we can plus that out and like, so these are definitely function pointers. So this is the like OGF dispatch functions. And so basically we get the OGF, we cap the OGF to seven, right? So if OGF is greater than seven, then we return out with a generic handler here. Otherwise, if there is a function for this OGF, and the command ID is in bounds of the maximum command number, then return the pointer to that plus, oh, it takes the, it takes this address and then it adds the OCF times four. So this must be a pointer, ah yeah, this is a pointer to tables. So these are all tables. So this seventh entry is a pointer to the other ones, which is the commands for, this is now indexed by, um, so if we looked at our command, we're sending our read command is, um, I think an FCO4, FCOA. So we wanna go to the eighth entry, <laughs> get it? The A, eighth entry, you know? <laughs> so I think this is D5 in size. I wonder if I can use hex there. So then if we look at the 10th entry, this is our command. This should be the function handler for the uh, read memory. And if we look at read byte, we'll find that there is a, uh, what am I sending? Where was I? This is kind of hard to scroll with this view. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, Replay, read byte, read byte, read, read byte. So we send this command and uh, we send a type, five is the length, four is the type of memory we want to read. And then this is a guarantee, it's just gonna fucking deref it and return it. This is probably the return. Yeah, it yep, sets E of the return. So this is the output packet that it returns back. And I'm sure at offset E or something, uh, maybe it's not at E, but yeah, I'm guessing local 18, it's derefing the parameter, it's probably subtracting some, so we can make this into a structure. <laughs> what, you like that? Yeah, like that. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what the parameters look like, but this is definitely handling this routine. Mm -hmm. So if we looked at others, if we looked at 
So these are all the dispatches for the custom commands. And anything in E is in the scratch space, which is maybe the patches and stuff. But like, there are a lot of commands here that are not documented. <laughs> Um, oh, this, these are uh, like empty stubs, I guess. So we would be able to overwrite one of these empty stubs, this like 90C. We could find somewhere in memory that's not being used in Scratch, overwrite a function, replace the function handler, and then we can call an arbitrarily, an arbitrary HCI command and run it in the context of the processor. Seems legit. <laughs> so... That's probably the next step, but uh, I think I'm gonna have to wrap up the stream because I gotta go to uh, dinner, and uh, I don't, I, I don't know if I'll, uh, I don't know if I'll keep streaming tonight. But we are now where I thought I was going to be when I started streaming, but uh, I had some issues with my dumping tool. But this is definitely correct. Like we, we found it. We found where the HCI commands are being processed. So. I'm going to wrap up here, and uh, maybe I'll stream later tonight. I'm not sure. So thanks for tuning in, everyone.